the garden, guys. He said, it's all mental for me. I'm back and I'm refreshed. Runs his record to six and nine against this ball. Once again, Lemmy can do no wrong aboard the right stuff. Just another great ride by Lemmy. And look, this is what we expected in this matchup. The right stuff is, is really no match at all for Jose Vitor Lemmy. But going back to Cage Report and coming back from these injuries, and it's not a fluke. It's not an accident. It, it's not like he's luckier than anybody mm -hmm. else. It's the work that this guy puts into it, both mentally and physically, is why he has these kind of results. 40. Five and a half, the rider score, the overall score, 88 points for Jose. The second qualified ride is going to leave him in second. But again, what he has been able to do throughout the course of his career against the right stuff is becoming legendary. It took a while. DeBrito did a great job of not reacting before the bull motion up until that one maneuver got him down. Yeah, and you could see the frustration here. Look, he's riding behind his rope. He's he's just trying to let it all go and, and kind of cut the corners here. But I love that he's in the fight. Kept his head down the whole time and stayed in the fight. The bull beats him there. Keep working on that technique and he'll get there. 45 and a quarter, the top bull score so far today. Olá, pessoal. Bem-vindos de volta aqui no nosso canal, que traz informações sobre a PBR americana, competição Unleash the Beast, que é a competição do campeonato mundial. Bom, semana passada a gente fez uma cobertura especial diretamente das arenas aqui do Madison Square Garden em Nova York. Se você não assistiu, corre assistir que tem muito vídeo exclusivo. Tem entrevista com João Ricardo Vieira, Edney Caminha, Silvano Alves, tem a chegada dos touros e muitos bastidores. A gente ainda não postou tudo dos bastidores que a gente fez, imagem em cima dos brites e tudo mais mas a gente promete que em breve a gente vai colocar aqui e também no nosso Instagram, Cowboys Underline by Underline Mabel. Vai chegar muita coisa ainda, muita imagem, que tem tanta produção, gente, que vocês não têm noção aqui para editar tudo isso. Bom, também temos aqui no nosso YouTube uma, um show, uma playlist especial chamada 15 Seconds of Bull Riding, que significa 15 segundos né, de bull riding, de montarias em touros, e você pode ver ali nos 15 segundos os melhores momentos da PBR, então se você não ainda, ainda não se inscreveu, se inscreve aqui, que você vai ter muito conteúdo exclusivo diretamente aqui no nosso canal. Mas chega de falar de Nova York, é hora de falar de Chicago, onde teve competição este final de semana, com o primeiro 15-15 Bucking Battle desta temporada. Vocês já viram aí a montaria do José Vitor Leme por 88 pontos em cima do The Right Stuff, também teve a melhor montaria, aliás, a melhor, o melhor desempenho do touro, que foi do touro Blue Duck, que derrubou o Rafael José de Brito e fez aí 45 e 25. Silvano Alves também montou o touro dele, fez 85 e 50 e continua aí coletando pontos no ranking mundial. Silvano que vai galgando ali devagarinho e continua entre os top 10 do mundo. Mas a melhor montaria da rodada foi do Dalton Castle. Ele que montou o touro Rock o Efeito por 89 e 75 aí, levou a melhor nota desta rodada. Coletou 58 pontos para o ranking mundial e ainda faturou 7.500 dólares. Vamos dar uma olhadinha na montaria do Dalton Castle. The highlight plays will come when the gate yeah. opens with this guy. You wanted a highlight, and there you have it. Our first qualified ride, and then he is launched into the stratosphere. Holy mackerel! As Castle pays for his score with his body, 89 and three quarters. Well, and he dominates this ride. Really a good bull. Got some up and down to him, stepping ahead. 
Castle just, I mean, you can see him moving the outside foot the whole time. That's an outstanding ride and a crazy get off. And the ground gets so hard right there because everybody's walking back and forth. So it gets really, really packed down. Gets his head around. That's good. I, I tell you what, that bull rock with it. Treated cow. E agora, hora de falar da rodada regular. Foi realmente espetacular. 22 montarias de sucesso, das quais 10 brasileiros conseguiram aí completar os 8 segundos em cima dos seus touros. Realmente uma rodada muito boa, cheia de montaria de sucesso. Porém, as três melhores montarias foram de cowboys americanos. O Derek Colbaba e o Dakota Lois dividiram a segunda posição do evento com 86 pontos. E a melhor nota da noite foi para Mason Taylor. Ele que montou o touro Sun Country por 87,50, faturou aí a rodada, pontos no ranking mundial. E são as montarias desses três cowboys que a gente vai ver a seguir. Come on, DK. Go ahead, Derek. Set up, finish it. Yeah! That's solid. Hey, Chicago, tell Derek that you liked it. <laughs> oh. I love the fact that Derek Colbaba did not quit. Watch this. He's going to utilize that free arm. He's almost bucked off a little back door action right there. Set him back in the center, and he finishes it with a big score. And Derek. Dakota Lewis. Browning, Montana. Do it. What do you think of Dakota Lewis tonight? Great job. And back to back bull rides. And Dakota going to celebrate in the middle of Chicago right now. Watch this replay. Before this ride, 86 was the lead. And now, Derek. Cole Baba is going to have to step to the side. He's sharing that number one spot with Dakota Lewis and 86 points. 86. Much better, Mason Taylor, this time around. Come on, Mason. Come on, Mason. Go. Just keep working. Just keep working. Yep. At a boy. Got it. You got it. That's solid. Oh, what do you think of Mason Taylor now? Ooh. Mason Taylor, fantastic bull ride. As you watch the replay, remember, 86 points is in the lead. The numbers for Mason Taylor, 87 and a half. Great job, Mason. That'll work. E a segunda rodada não foi tão boa quanto a primeira. Na segunda rodada tivemos apenas 12 montarias de sucesso. Ainda assim continuou um número alto, um número bom. E quem estava liderando essa segunda rodada foi o campeão da semana passada aqui em Nova York, José Vitor Leme, que montou o touro Knucklehead por 87 pontos. No evento geral, ele estava em segundo lugar, apenas atrás do Dakota Lewis. Mas antes da gente falar do Championship Round, hora de dar uma olhadinha nessa montaria do José. Here's his chance to move to the top. Once again, Leme lands an eight seconds that he needed. This will probably be the highest marked ride we've seen out of the first round and now the second round. This was a really good ride on a good bull. Knucklehead 
tried to use the whole fist, and you are right. It is the best score of the weekend so far. 87 points. Three points over the bull, too, here from the rider. But you look where his upper body always returns to. You know, anytime it ever raises up a little bit, as soon as the bull front, in, front end comes up, his upper body finds that front end again. He, ne he always fights to get back to that home position. He's now ridden six of seven so far this season. Let's send it back down to Kate. Knucklehead was quick, had some big moves. What about your style allows you to show off on one like that? Uh, he's a young bull, but he have a lot of skills. He was trying to buck me off all the time, but I'm so glad to ride him and make some points and go to, to this championship round in a good spot. Great ride. Thank you. Trick. Hora do Championship Round, rodada dos campeões. E o primeiro cowboy a fazer uma montaria de sucesso nessa rodada foi o Derek Colbaba. Ele que pegou o touro Mr. Winston e fez 83 pontos e 75. Depois dele, a próxima montaria de sucesso foi de Live Vest Binder. Ele que pegou o, o Puck Roller por 87 pontos. Realmente uma montaria muito boa. O JRV, infelizmente, não conseguiu ficar os 8 segundos em cima do seu touro, então ele não pontuou aí no Championship Round. E o Ezekiel Mitchell escolheu o Blue Duck, que foi o touro número 1 um da primeira rodada. E o Blue Duck novamente desempenhou uma ótima apresentação, derrubou o Ezekiel aí por, nos 2.7 segundos, coletando 46 pontos aliás, marcando 46 pontos nesse Championship Round e a gente vai dar uma olhadinha nas montarias do Eli Westbider e no desempenho do Blue Duck. That is how you draw it up. Oh, except for the finale. Vastbinder takes a shot on the way off, but he's feeling no pain at the moment. Eli and Pookie combined for a good one. We've got a new number one. Should be a good score coming in too. Pookie Holler has a really good day the first half of it, but Vastbinder, he's just dominant right here. He's in total control the entire time. Really an impressive ride and an impressive weekend out of Eli. Yeah, he goes three for three. He finishes off with an 87 aboard Pookie Holler. So that is now the standard. Eli Vassbinder's best last year was a third in Milwaukee. He was second the year before at Iron Cowboy. Now he sits first in Chicago. building confidence. Zeke. But Blue Duck is going to unfortunately cause a detour. That one looks to be over at 2.7. Yeah, Blue Duck is a darn good bull and puts up really great numbers here with a 46-point bull score. Uh, this, was a, this was a big pick by Zeke. And it's a little raised up. Feet coming up behind him and a really good day from Blue Duck. That's a bull that has got the skill set to be one of those contenders for Bull of the Year. Yeah, really good day. 46 points, the bull score. That's the best bull score, isn't it, we've seen all weekend? Yep. O Kaique Pacheco estava na terceira posição do evento e para o Championship Round, ele escolheu o touro Tulsa Time. Gente, que apresentação maravilhosa do Kaique. O Tulsa Time estava pulando de uma maneira muito selvagem, mas o Kaique conseguiu controlar aí e conseguiu fazer 88 pontos e 50, assumindo a liderança do evento até então. Tinha mais dois cowboys para montar ainda. José Vitor Leme escolheu o touro que deu a ele na semana passada 92 pontos, que foi o Cliffhanger. Dessa vez, ele não conseguiu uma pontuação tão alta, mas ainda assim fez 88 e 25 e aí já passou na frente na liderança do evento. O último cowboy a fazer a montaria nesse Championship Round foi o Dakota Lois, mas ele não conseguiu completar os 8 segundos, 
não pontuou. E aí o que deu a vitória ao José Vitor Leme. Segunda vitória consecutiva do José Vitor Leme nessa competição da PBR Unleashed the Beast temporada 2023. Segundo evento que ele participa e agora ele é segundo no ranking mundial. Realmente uma apresentação incrível do José, o que ele tá fazendo aí, né, em busca do terceiro título mundial, então vamos ver, vai ter muita emoção ainda nessa temporada 2023, antes de olhar a montaria do Kaique e do José, lembrando a vocês, se inscreve aqui no nosso canal, ativa o sininho, que toda vez que a gente colocar um vídeo novo, você vai ficar sabendo, e também olha lá o nosso Instagram, cowboys, underline, by, underline, babel. Beijos e até a próxima! Pacheco with a powerful eight. We're going to have a new number one in Chicago. And a man that's got a gold buckle, has a team championship, and is going for a second world title, has had a career weekend. 88 and a half. Well, this is, this is a really good ride, a really a cool bull. I get a little excited. I probably liked it better than 88 and a half. Um, that bull's really leaping in the eye. I mean, look, he's really great to ride. His back stays pretty flat. Just enough kick to get a guy up off it, up on his bull rope and help him out. And Kaiki just does a really good job the whole time finding the front end, chin tucked, good stuff. And Kaiki Pacheco. They may take another look at it based on time, but it's just the way Jose drew it up. They will review this. If it stands as a qualified ride, this should be enough points to move him ahead of Kaiki. But this crowd is going to have to wait. You know, I, I, I talked about it in the 1515 earlier with Jose. The, the only time that I feel like the bull has a chance against Jose is when he tries to do too much and he starts getting really wild with his free arm, puts a lot of pressure on his riding hand. His arms aren't very long. He can't he can't put that kind of pressure on his hand. This is going to be close, but I think he's still going to have the tail of that bull rope. Yeah, as long as the, that's what will tell the tail here. The bull rope is in his hand and he doesn't. Yeah, from that angle, this looks like a score. Now it's just going to be a matter of how much they dock him right. for going off the side of the bull. Because remember, half the score comes from the rider. Half the score comes from the bull. He needs 86 and a quarter. He gets 88 and a quarter. Yeah. We've got a new leader. And, you know, I think they got that one right. They didn't get crazy. The rider score, he's a quarter point below Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger had a good day. Hey, you don't hear this very often. Good job, judges. <laughs>